Welcome to the continent of Iceras, where the pantheon of virtue, living gods, watch over the people. The Tempest Fence isolates the land from the outside world with its savage wild storms. Deep within the mystical Bloomsent Forest manifested a collision of destinies that would steer the fate of the world in directions no one imagined once seven adventurers met. Whisper, an Ergenasi. Draven, a human seeking revenge after coming back to life. Sippy, an adorable halfling with a darker symbiotic relationship. Xylo, a religious follower of Toko, the goddess of love and harmony. Goba, a witty goblin sorcerer. Shelly, a pacifist turtle barbarian, and Sildren, a proud Leonin fighter with mysterious powers. Their common goal was to find the missing priestess Leandra. They discovered she was kidnapped by dragonborns and turned into a biomechanical horror known as a husk. The party confronted the threat, marking their first step towards stronger bonds. Reporting the disturbance to the authorities in the nearby holy city of Gazia raised tensions within the Holy Order of Paladins. During their stay in the city, the party's goblin had a mystical encounter with Eryx, the goddess of night sky and cosmology. Right, you see, life is hard in the goblin clan of Rattlebones, especially when I suggested that maybe we shouldn't be such savage raiders all the time. For my radical political views, I got bonked in the head real hard and left for dead. Fortunately, a divine being I initially mistook for Krepak, god of the goblins, resurrected me telling me that I have a higher purpose. And not only that, but now I had the ability to make things explode from a distance. After meeting this interesting folk, Eryx, goddess of the night, approached me and revealed the fact that she was the one who brought me up to life and gave me an important quest to sample all the fermented goat milk across Iceras. Okay, maybe that was a lie. Uh, she tasked me with finding out the source of Sildren's mysterious powers. Off we go! The party decided to stay for the upcoming Harvest Festival and take some time to get to know each other better. Our adorable sized halfling revealed to Draven another side of her, more ancient and wicked. So, I hope Draven was not too scared when he met my best friend in the world, Zolux, because he can be a bit intimidating when telling stories about chopping heads off in murder. You see, now he's the essence of a once upon a time earth elemental that is stored within my green magical gem that I stole and carry with me all over the place in my wooden shutter lantern. And I kinda get the whole thing why he's mad and angry all the time. Because he was dormant in a void for so long and then tortured endlessly and had a very rough time. But I know that he's a good guy deep inside. Shut up, Sudu. You are making me look bad. I'm in good whatever. What I needed from the dead girl Draven was a promise that once we are done in Gazia, we're gonna go to the home of the Earth Ganassi to handle some unfinished business with them. <laughs> I must get in touch with my friend Bor and satisfy my thirst for souls and revenge from all the years of torture I've endured from the Ganassi. There, there, Zolux. Sip is here. It's all gonna be fine. I need to perform some revenge myself, you see, on this evil dragonborn known as the Scarlet Oppressor, since he came to my village and burned it to the ground along with my papa. During the Harvest Festival, Gazia's Halls of Study was overrun by dragonborns that made use of hidden portals to infiltrate, seeking a vital holy artifact. The party, aided by paladins, 
fought bravely to protect the city and emerged victorious despite numerous losses and letting the Dragonborn leader escape with a peculiar sphere from the Holy Reliquary's vaults. In the heat of battle, Xylo, the party's ardent follower of Toko, involuntarily revealed a darker side of her personality. Merciful goddess, my hope, mother of all, welcoming of strangers and helper of the poor, Toko. May you forever bless us with your grace and love, and may all live in harmony and peace. Amen. Such a shameful display this was. What a sin I have committed. Ever since I was but a young nun, serving Mother Toko at the monastery near Weinsding, I knew that something corrupted lives within me. And I've been praying endlessly, day and night, for the Mother to keep it at bay. I must never strain from the path and from the connection with her, for she is the one to help me maintain control over this form of corruption. The corruption with the name Wither taking the life and the light out of everything that she touches, out of everything that mother made be. I must keep her contained and myself isolated. But what is written for us by the hands of the gods is the destiny that we cannot avoid. Mother guided me to reveal a secret about me, one that was kept hidden by my sisters. I learned that they fear not only me, but also the possibility that this darkness could one day take over. And if this was to happen, I am to be terminated, like an enemy. I escaped to save my sisters from myself and to find the protection of the mother, the only powerful and wise enough to know what is to be done. If the good of the world means the end of me, then so be it. Amen. After Xylo was taken in by the paladins to answer for her heretical transformation, her sisters ultimately set her free, though banishing her from the clergy and letting her know that the answer she seeks goes back to her place of origins to the east. And the party was linked once again by their paths that seemed to lead all of them further from Gazia. The next destination they chose to visit was Gravel Grotto, a secluded village of Earth Genasi deep within the Morenza Mountains. Their road was not without perils though, as the shadowy past of Draven came back to haunt him, demanding its toll. The past? I wish that I could just left it all behind and moved on, but my hunger makes it so that I cling to this mortal realm in order to achieve my revenge against the Cabal of Tainted Eclipse. Those motherless cutthroats, who cut me down on an alley in Cicera and continued to do the unthinkable. What awaited me on the other side was neither paradise nor damnation, but a place of utter darkness in which I could not move, I could not think, but I could feel. I felt my wife's final moments, every bruise, every cut, all culminating in a pain that I cannot explain. That of searing flesh. Those moments felt like an eternity. An eternity of suffering in which I could not do anything but hear my wife's muffled screams. Something deep inside of me broke. My mind was empty, save for one thought. I would kill. I've played their deaths thousands of times. Their sneered faces became etched into my memory. The final moments of my oblivion, however, were me screaming and pleading with whomever or whatever might answer. And someone or something did. I will soon realize that nothing is free, not even revenge. Ogbris, an unknown Apotheon, demanded Draven's full servitude due to their pact. An ultimatum was given. Disobey him once again, and Draven's remaining living soul will be taken. During their travels, the party met two characters that proved to be both interesting and helpful. Eversmile, a jumpy herringon, offered insights into the Dragonborn's plans, and Javier, a bookworm halfling, knew someone with information on the Cabal of Tainted Eclipse, the group responsible for Draven's misery. Javier can introduce them to Ipton Amberheart, a Leonin mercenary and member of Sildren's Brotherhood. The Brotherhood. Those were the good days. 
I'm not trying to say I don't appreciate my current friends. In fact, back then I had worse food and even worse sleep. But we were lucky enough to train all day. I had my crystal clear orders. What I miss the most are the 12 hours guard duty. 12 hours of uninterrupted stalking. What more could I ask for? I suppose I could ask to find out what happened to my brother. Drios, the Grey Mane he was called. He went missing with the rest of the Brotherhood after a dangerous mission in Saisera. But if Iptin was sighted in Isinavel, maybe I can still find out what happened to them. Until then, I'm renaming it the Dark Cloud Brotherhood. I have new mysterious powers, new mysterious friends. I'm not even the only blue man in the group. How much more until I get a break? The party then continued their travels towards Gravel Grotto, and now that they started ascending the Morenza Mountains, they were met not only with beautiful breathtaking vistas, but also with perilous encounters. But this hike was most enlightening for Whisper, as they were visited by an Etaru, messenger of the nature god Amantoto, who, through mystical means, managed to help Whisper unlock some long-lost important memories of their past. Hi, I'm Whisper, carried by a breeze to the northwest through the tempest fence before becoming the wind underneath the eagle wings, fellowship of CP and of Darren, or Whisper for short. I am the blue, I am the special, I am the wisest, because I was not born a humanoid, like the friends of mine. I was born an air essence 1000 years ago and drifted in this air form had a lot of adventures, hence the long name I have. And at a point, I penetrated a magical wild storm called the Tempest Fence. And beyond this, I have discovered what it protects, the new continent, Aceras. Then I was given a humanoid form by the shaman of the Amantoto. I had the legs, the arms, and the everything. I have wandered aimlessly around the place, but something deep inside me knew that I had a higher purpose here. One of the Etaru, the friends I have made, helped me de unlock what is hidden in the memories of mine. It was all made clear. I have seen that my Erginasi tribe from the beyond had made me deliver a message to the fellow Earth brethren and letting them know that their past transgressions from long, long ago have been de-absolved. Little did I know that the Genasi, my people's golden age, from the millennia long, long ago, were destroyed. Their culture, their tradition, their the purpose, it has all been destroyed in order to prevent the spread of a terrible corruption. If not for their sacrifice, we'd all become the puppets, devoid of the free will, for a purpose that yet remains. The unknown. In the meantime, I'm learning the ways of the humanoids, about their passions, about their language, and about their love. As soon as the party made it to Gravel Grotto, the situation quickly escalated as Zolux took over Sippy and started manifesting its revenge. Luckily, some of the party members were able to go ahead into the village and announce that Zolux was approaching and that they should prepare. During this time, Shelly, who was looking for a way to restore an enchantment upon a ring he's been having, got in touch with Cobble, an Earth Genasi mineral expert who held the turtle with his magical ring. Hi, I'm Shelly. It's nice to meet you. I left the island of El Tuchiabo, where I'm from, a while back and went exploring the continent just like my uncle did. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to talk about my uncle, right? So you see, I have this ring here on my finger. It was my uncle Karak's ring and right before he died, he passed it on to me. But he also went into the ring once he died and now the ring is my uncle and I could also speak with him very clearly in my head but after a while 
I think the enchantment started fading, and I got worried. I met a friend of his, a Leonin from Gazia, who told me that this gem is a small piece of a geom heart stone, and told me that the Earth Genasi of Gravel Grotto would know more. There I met Cobble, who was kind enough to help me reconnect with him on a more spiritual plane. It was very trippy and only to find that the nature of the gem was corrupting the thoughts and will of my uncle, he really looked terrible though. I was able to help him so that ultimately he got rid of his shadow self, you know, the corruption part. Not Uncle Karak. And now the ring works again. Oh, I also may have made a promise to my uncle to delve into a deadly dungeon and finish his quest. Oh well, it's good to have you back, uncle. Yeah, yeah, don't get all mushy on me. Through diplomacy and revelations, the tension was diffused between the Genasi and Zolux, and Whisper delivered the message of forgiveness and enlightenment to their earthly kin. Then, the party joined the Earth Genasi on a deep underground expedition to face the ancient prime elemental Bor, and to stop the corruption that enslaves beings that would take over anyone and void them of their free will, bringing them into mindless servitude. In the labyrinthian underground tunnels, they've met Blue, a warforged unit searching for its master. After reuniting them, the party reached the Geomheart Vault and uncovered the lost history of the Genasikin from a time long gone. Also, the Dragonborns seem to have prior involvement here inside the vault. In the Halls of Fabrication, they learned of the Elemental's purpose and fought a hard battle. Victorious, they returned to Gravel Grotto, hailed as heroes, guiding the tribe into a new era. As they emerge from the mountains, new quests and mysteries await our adventurers in Iceras. Stay tuned to Dysylvania to see where the winds of fate will take the party next. But if you're looking for some shorter bits of content, we have some extra spicy and captivating one-shots on our YouTube channel.